This is Spanish Channel, so we're actually too high in Russia to use this boy. What's your life in Ukraine? Oh, you know, it's all the Russia for fun, but I've already had the same side of the My mother's recent was just all fair gig and sick point with that. Well, I tried a lot, I guess, not really. I'm going to try to get through this to get the dodge here. I want to be most of these very old. I think they're in all of these are new places. I will be proud to be friends that I turned out. So let's just get into it. Three, two, one, play. Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba continues to be a star in the anime town, and one character in the city is captured for our enthusiastic fan base and the anime community at large. They made us fall in love from the moment they first entered frame and continued to delight us with every appearance. We want to shout our love for them from the rooftops and protect them at all costs. And today, as my second foray into the science of waifuology, I am going to break down exactly what it is that makes them so appealing. What makes Inosuke Hashabira best for you? That's right, I got you with the old switcheroo. I, I was initially thinking about doing a video on Nezuko, but since she doesn't talk much, exploring her appeal beyond just saying, look how cute and sometimes small she is, will require a very different approach from most other waifus. And given how protective her fans are of her, I think it's safer to build up to that and hone my waifu analysis skills on a character who's a bit easier to break down first. While I won't say I like Inosuke more, because like I said, the Nezuko defense force terrifies me, I do like him quite a lot. And since he's such a distinctive character in the shonen landscape and in the show itself, I think it'll be fun to explore the design and characterization in a quicker, short format and to find out why he's so likable. I'm still calling this a once in a white entry, mostly because I'm really happy with how the logo came out and I got some good use out of it, but also I think it is appropriate. Because when I look at Inosuke, I think, this is my boy. He is precious. I want to hug him and protect him and see him smile. And unlike the franchise's other flagship Moe icon, you're actually allowed to root him, which is the single key distinguishing factor between a waifu and a Dottori. Indeed, his design invites it. Inosuke hates wearing shirts almost as much as he hates not being the best at everything, and he is ripped. Now, not everyone likes muscles, but if you do, he provides quality man service in almost every frame he spends on screen. His male-presenting nipples are just out there all the time, and he does not give a fuck. Is it any wonder why he's immediately become such popular in the Rule 63 redesigns? On top of all that, the feature he does choose to from the is a striking Jesus Christ on my face. And if you're a fan of Gap Moe, that feeling elicited when the character's behavior diverges widely from the expectations created by their design or previous characterization, oh boy, you do not see many wider gaps than the one between Inosuke's refined good looks and his less refined personality. Inosuke is boisterous, confident, and temperamental to the extreme. He basically acts like a wild animal oh, because he basically is, is having been raised in the wild by boars uh, after being uh, a baby. Uh, that background uh, is reflected in his rampaging fighting style, stubborn attitude, uh, and quick temper, uh, as well as his attitude toward violence. He enjoys play fighting as much as any warm-blooded animal, and he also has a lot of fun in real life-or-death combat. Nothing seems to get his blood pumping quite like the thrill of battle, exerting his strength over a strong opponent. He's equally competitive when it comes to his friends, eager to try any cool thing that he sees them do and do it better, and compelled to contribute the most to any activity that the group undertakes, even when that activity is undertaken. You bury those bodies, okay? This simplistic competitive drive makes him easy for other characters to manipulate, or maybe train would be a better word. The fastest way to convince him to do something is to tell him you don't think he can, and conversely, placating him is as easy as making him feel like he's won something. Despite the fact that he's usually taking orders, or as he probably put it, strategic advice from one of the smarter demon slayers around him, most often Tanjiro, Inosuke kinda just assumes he's in charge all the time, because he's the strongest and the best, so he has to be the pack alpha, right? He does a lot of petty things to start fights, because they're fun and assert his dominance, like stealing food off of Kataro's plate, and his friends mostly just kind of let him, which works out, because he's not actually hurting anyone or giving unqualified orders that might put his friends in danger. They know feeling like the alpha makes him happy, and hey, maybe deep down they want to protect that tusky smile too, so they just let him get away with it. 
Or in Tanjiro's case, maybe he's just completely oblivious to the aggression. This hyper-competitive, self-aggrandizing attitude could easily render Inosuke unlikable, but unlike, say, Bakugo, it doesn't seem to be rooted in an inferiority complex, and at the very least, Inosuke doesn't bear any grudges against those who one-up him. He simply vows to overcome them next time because his confidence is mostly genuine. When he first enters a situation, there's nothing he believes he can't do, and even if he's in so much obvious danger or so outclassed that he has his doubts, he'll always try his best anyway. This boundless oh, blind optimism gives him a raw, lovable charisma that makes him immensely fun to watch in every scene he's in. He provides a lot of humor in the show's lighter moments, and acts as a strong comedic foil for the cowardly self-denise. He also lends battles and other more serious scenes a sense of height and intensity that our more reserved and sensitive protagonist Tantaro is ill-suited to deliver. Basically, much like Jaime Nezuko, he makes every scene he's in better just by being there. A big part of that entertainment value lies in his design, which is simple but oozes personality. While his soft face might belie his brutal nature, it covers for it, and also covers it up, with his most eye-catching piece of attire, which I personally think is a stroke of character design genius. The wall-eyed forehead that he normally wears is a little reminiscent of the floppy, dumbfounded horse mask that's become all but ubiquitous in shitposts from that over. But while Demon Slayer does often utilize it to add a touch of absurdity to its funnier moments, the boar mask's closed mouth, sharper features, and ragged appearance make it a lot more versatile than the rubber man icon, while still capturing the same fundamental appeal. Throw some harsh shading on it and point those eerily large, intense eyes right at the camera, and Inosuke's mask suddenly starts looking a lot less goofy and a lot uh, more menacing. So he can keep it on in serious dramatic scenes and life or death battles without completely destroying the mood. When he's fighting, especially, it makes him look wild, violent, and unpredictable perfect complement to his improvised, animalistic fighting style. Oh. From the very first second he appears in the drum house, he's right. almost exactly oh, what he's all about. And and before he even moves himself. in for the kill, you can tell that he's going to absolutely tear that tubby demon apart. Demon Slayer's character designs are all generally cut above other shows awesome, anime, dude. but for instance, like the ability and appeal, awesome. none of them have enough skate feet. Like, of course, just she like, wouldn't be nearly like, as memorable and likable in character if you could just like, figure him out at a glance. Like, no skate is minded like, and straightforward in his intentions, but he still has layers, and stubborn as he can be, he's not unreasonable. He quickly recognizes Hachiro's knack for thinking, and despite grumbling when he's told to do so, he'll usually see his friend's line of reasoning and take the course of action he suggests, even if it's less fun. Learning this, in turn, opens his mind to the idea that there are other kinds of strength than his own raw physical might, and gradually, Inosuke comes to be more capable of respecting those around him, even if they aren't tough, animalistic fighters. Hey, that's character development. Underneath his gruff attitude and his behavior, awesome. Inosuke clearly He's craves like human about. contact and validation. Indeed, as much as his competitive attitude is driven by an instinctual thirst for dominance, it often seems like he just wants to hear another human tell him that he's as great as he feels he is. Which makes sense. For most of his life, he's never had the kind of basic, self-affirming social interactions that humans need and take for granted. Despite how energetic and fun he is, there's clearly a tragic death to an Oskay's character that I hope the series explores. That's kind of a running theme with its heroes and villains, and that gives him an appeal beyond just being a funny, exciting guy. Whenever Gengoro acknowledges his abilities or returns his aggressive attitude with kindness, Inosuke immediately gets all happy and fluffy-headed, sometimes to the point that he forgets to snap back and drops his wild tsundere aside. It is very cute, and given the way that he responds to praise, along with other aspects of his demeanor, if Inosuke didn't have a mask, I'd almost suspect that he was raised by 30 to 50 feral dogs. That's actually a pretty common trick for making animal characters in animation more appealing. Dogs are just inherently funny and lovable, so mapping their behavior onto less familiar creatures like horses or reindeer can go a long way to make them more endearing to their audience. Of course, Inosuke is a human, so those dog-like traits do manifest a little differently, and he's obviously a more complex character than a mascot in a Disney film, 
but fundamentally the same principle still applies. Inosuke is a simple, straight-shooting, easy-to-understand kind of guy who wears his heart on his sleeve. This looks and simplistic. Makes him simple to affect. His open book yeah, appeal sorry. is actually very similar to that simplistic. of Kenjiro, though the balance of their cute and brutal sides are know. obviously reversed. The strongest waifus simplistic are the at a glance and come to love Simplistic depths. And Inosuke certainly yeah, has so simplistic depths. Although, while I did say he's best boy at the top of the video in order to grab people's attention, I do think that Kanawa is also a really cute good boy. And I don't want to take any credit from him. Anyway, let me know what Inosuke does the same for you in the comments down below. And while you're down there, tell me what other waifus you'd like to see me study as part of this very serious and important scientific project. Also, there's a few buttons above the comment section, especially with one marked subscribe, that I hear do some pretty cool things when you click them. So hey, he's, he's I don't know, if you're feeling bored, why not try so so If you're looking for more to watch, watch, click the top so link on the end card for a discussion of Netflix, watch, binge culture, and how monthly viewing can make some shows better. Or if you'd like, like to see me talk about Demon Slayer some more, click the one at the bottom. I'm Jeff Du, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement. Damn. I say I got some points for it's all, it's all, it's all, there's a little hard to tell to you, obviously. That actually is unfortunately. Those have a, yeah, simplistic depth. It's actually a good way to describe this to you, obviously. Um, I mean, you'll see if you can manage this in the end. I would see if you think you don't. We are finding the most interesting thing comes out of my own, which is not whatever. Or the movie, and then the season of season three comes out of my own, which is not whatever. I can't wait for more to talk about the videos, this is just great. At the end of the video, I would like to thank all my current subscribers on YouTube, all my current patrons on Patreon. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and comment if you, if you, if you like. And if you enjoyed the channel, please subscribe. You can find the links to my current Patreon video watching, as well as the redirect to the match itself down below in the description. If you want to find my Patreon, please do. And I'll be to keep to the original content. And, and finally, as my favorite, favorite, and we're here on Community Creative Digital Talkings. It's a sign bye bye.